Why, hello there. This is your good Thomas Friend 74. <sighs> Here is going to be the next product. Now, um, unfortunately, I still cannot bring my Thomas collection out. It's still not going to be done anytime soon. I still need to get some things done in the house before I can get my Thomas collection out. But I still want to make some videos. And unfortunately, since I can't get my Thomas collection out, I have no choice but to turn to this. Here's my only option. Boy, I know most of you are not going to like this, but this is my only option. It is the Trackmaster, which he was, Talking Bullstrode and Which Way Bridge. I know this is from the redo of Thomas and Friends that no one likes. I really feel like Mattel really doesn't care about Thomas and Friends anymore, let alone the fans. Oh, let's not go into that. Um, I actually uh, purchased two sets. Um, it was this big one here and that small one over there. I will make separate videos of them. Um, this one I recently got, as well as that. Uh, this was discounted, uh, which was $50, but then it got discounted to 40 So that was a good price. So, let's begin with this playset. This is partially part of the uh, Talk Interactive series, as you've kind of guessed by this little emblem there. It does have a talking feature. Down there, there's the big playset where this is going to be assembled like. You can just see that it's just a small little figure 8 set featuring the bridge. And the, the table of contents and what pieces it has. Now the real reason why I bought this is because this is something that I would see in the Playroll franchise. It definitely reminds me of something that Playroll made. Well, me personally. There we go. There's the Mall of Bullstrode, who was once a disagreeable barge. And here is Percy. And uh, when I was doing this at the store, <laughs> I would often do this. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> Imagine there's an episode like Percy didn't pay attention, he falls under here. <laughs> I would see him do this. I love that. Oh, this is just so amusing for me to do. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done now. Uh, anyways, uh, time to get this all out. Some uh, more at the back. There we go. All Percy is out. I sent some cards right here. Around here. And I see there's a tab here, which I believe... I just... See the instructions. All right, so the play set. Okay, so. Uh, 
There are also these uh, zip ties, which hold the bridge in place. Uh, so uh, those must come out as well. And on this side too, there is another. Unless there is a few more. Ah, there is also this on the inside as well. Mm. This need to end in this product. Okay, uh, let me get some time. I forgot there's one more panel up here which has this. You need to twist that off, and I think, ah, here in the back as well. One more here. There. So there we have it. All right, here's what you get. Two of these ramps. Five, no, uh, four curved track, two green and two brown, a full straight track, these additional ramps, and they're not like these. One straight, one's curved. A set of points, stop and go parts. A set of buffers, bull strode, Percy, the flatbed that can carry either the log or the crates, and the bridge. Let's take a look at the engines first. Let's start with this mall of Percy here. Oh, the Percy that we're never gonna get used to. <sighs> Let's take a look around this model. Well, right off the bat, I can see that the whistle and the dome are separate pieces, not part of the mold here. No painted deep, no painted buffers on both sides. There's this very long coupling. And this switch is actually very tall. Sounds like that. And there's some unusual detailing on this model. This is like water and see the fish going <laughs> once hopping out. And this side uh, seems to be a little bit splashing. Crabs on a surfboard. But the one thing about this model is that is the face is has been altered. Noticing that the face, the only thing that is on the face that is molded is the nose but the the eyes eyebrows and mouth are actually printed on the model and um, I think I have an actually good explanation of why Mattel did this and this will be the also be the explanation of why we really got expressions on the uh, proper era of Thomas and friends with the correct ones that we'll rather be used to and why we rarely got expressions and it's actually very easy to explain this. Uh, this part right here is actually a lot easier and a lot more faster. But on the previous models, incarnations, when making a separate face for an expression, it's actually a living nightmare because of how stressful it is. Okay, let me explain. We did got a few expressions in the proper areas of Thomas and Friends. And most playsets don't include those specialized faces. And most people are just getting upset that we're just getting standard versions of Thomas. And we want like 
Thomas with unique expressions or engines with unique expressions? Well, the reason why they never did that, we always get standard smiling faces, is mainly because of how stressful it is to make a separate face of an expression. Because obviously we'll be in the mold and we'll be the specialized liquid that will be into the mold. But the thing is, that mold, it takes a lot of trial and error to make it perfect. And most of the time, the results will always be very tacky and very awkward. And just doesn't look right in the end with the face. One good example would be the Thomas Wooden Railway products when everything was shipped to Tomy. And you know those faces really weren't good. But that is just a tack. But that would be a good explanation and a little example of why it is very frustrating to make separate molded faces with unique expressions without making it look so awkward. It's just very hard, very time consuming, and you know that time is money. They often don't have the time to keep making the mold perfect, and thus, they just don't do it. It's just too much risk. It risks they just probably just can't afford taking, and that's why they just stood with standard smiling faces. Because they just didn't want to go through the troublesome effort of giving a separate mold of an expressional face on the engine. That's why they didn't want to go there. It's just too hard. Printed faces? No problem. It just takes them just a few minutes and there you go. Okay, so on this model you also see that this chassis is a little bit altered slightly. This part here is close to the chassis. So this is not compatible with the... Uh, the old Trackmaster Gen 2 products. This is still technically Trackmaster Gen 2 in a way. But anyways, uh, moving on from Percy, let's take a look at Bullstrode. Now, Bullstrode is, um, this one you see here is the same exact Bullstrode used on the Thomas and Percy Interactive playset from 2020. And it is exactly the same. And there is the face of Bullstrode, like I said, only the on this one, it's only everything else is printed, but just the nose is molded on. It has this big cargo area here where you can store the loads. And there's the bottom side of it. It would have been better if it had a lot more details printed on the model. But this model bolstrol can fit either the wood or the crates. Obviously. And those actually have holes at the bottom of these because they are going into this flatbed here, which has a specialized hole there where you can fit in the crates or the locks. And this one here has the wheels all smooth, no teethy wheels, that's why I call them teethy wheels, that part doesn't work. But this one is a very fast, smooth, running flatbed. Okay, I also want to take a look at this uh, stop and grow trap because this one is vastly different. Um, now, this one here, I flipped the switch here from the engine to the stop, but this part here, you see it's a little bit risen up and the engine stop here. Well, this is mainly for the talking interactive engines because they actually have triggers on the bottom, uh, kind of like the turbo engines. Thomas Percy and Diesel, I have a turbo Percy. Well, it's exactly the same, but this one works with the talking engines. I don't have any. I would like to own some, but this switch is actually a lot bigger. <laughs> and in fact, it's actually so big enough, I was, I was able to do something like this. Kind of like in real life. <laughs> Very nice. And it says here to go, see both arrows, and the this one is obviously means stop. And these parts here allow us to fit into some accessories, like some buildings and a sign, which they often do. So I got that going. Now we get into my favorite part, the bridge, which is the typical drawbridge. Let's first start off with the bottom part here. Now, the bottom part here is a track that actually moves, which is actually a good idea. So you can have the train going like this, the train going like this, or just go straight. 
That's actually a very good idea. And because the bridge actually has this lever here, which you can raise by pulling it down, that sign goes up. I really love that. It's attention to detail, but the stickers unfortunately keep coming off the product here. You can see here, they all of these just keep coming off. These stickers are pretty non-good quality, I'm afraid. You can lower the bridge by pressing it upwards. Now, this right here is a door with the house's two AA batteries, like that. And um, I also want to show this. That is actually a switch inside the product here. And that switch is not to turn off the product, but it's the Try Me. And uh, that has been held in by one of these. Yeah. It was done that way. So, um, like I said, the reason why the bridge raises and have this here is because there's a set that contains skiff with a tall mast. There's a place that, that does have that. And this allows skiff to go through. Well, obviously he's not gonna go through here, obviously because it's still not high enough for skiff. It still works. Now the um, I know that I said said that this reminds me of something that Playroll would make. Well, of course Playroll do a little bit of a better job at this. And uh, here's what they did. If Playroll made this, the tracks will be a little bit more bigger on both sides, and both will have like stop and go tabs on both sides. Obviously, there will be just be one side. When the bridge goes up. The tabs will go up, stopping the trains, lowering the bridge, the tabs go down, and the trains can go on. That's what Playroll would have done for the Witch Ray Bridge. Oh, but the batteries inside this model, this is a brand new screwdriver. I got a brand new one, just in case, uh, in case of backups. Get that out. Here it is. This is the upgraded, uh, well, not technically upgraded. It's reworked drive units for the All Engines Go versions of Thomas characters. This is long switch, so this may not work with the all original ones, and obviously won't because this is so small. So of course it's not compatible, and there's the big coupling. It works perfectly. Oh, by the way, that's for the dome and whistle. It's just held in by that screw. There we go. Alright, now I'll assemble the layout. Like I said, it's just a small figure eight. Um, this does make some sounds, um, raising the bridge and lowering it. All engines go! <laughs> and, you make, and you can make sounds by pressing this button. So let's set this um, model of Percy on the go to the bridge. Okay. 
That's gonna do it for this little video. I'm not gonna go through all the phrases of this, but you can guys get the gist already. I'm gonna leave the video here, but thank you all for watching.